Hi there folks, uh, my name is Tyler Doby and I'd like to give you a tour of the Caslow Masonic Lodge. Um, I'll just flip around here and uh, basically this building is uh, 126 years old and um, it was originally a store, uh, the Green Brothers store, and um, it uh, since 1896 has housed a Masonic Lodge on the top floor. Um, the Lodge members have owned the building since uh, original owner H.R. Uh, Giegridge passed the ownership over to us in 1938. Um, I'm the current master of the Lodge um, and uh, Let's just show you some of the inside. So uh, on our left here is a storage room, so we won't bother showing you that because it's a mess, but in here there's a few neat artifacts. This here is the G that stood at the east of the uh, Bluebell Lodge of Instruction, which was um, set up in Riendel across the lake on the east shore. Uh, that's one of the square encompasses that used to be on the uh, lodge. Um, this room is uh, basically storage for a chapter, the historical records of the uh, chapter number three of the Royal Arch. So that means it was the third chapter in uh, British Columbia and uh, was, um, it's, the Royal Arch is like a concordant body so people have to be a uh, Master Mason to become a member um, So there's just all sorts of records and archives in there. This uh, is from the Royal Arch as well um, so this is um, The regalia that and sash and whatnot uh, that would have belonged to um, or did belong to uh, our brother Hugh Walker um, so those, that's an apron for the Royal Arch, and um, it's just a little different than the, uh, than the um, aprons that the, a regular Freemason would, would wear. Um, so it's a, a separate body, but, but related, obviously. Um, so a little further information about that, this little diagram um, shows you different degrees. So the idea here is that the base level is uh, the first three degrees of what's called Blue Lodge Freemasonry. And, um, and then these two pathways on the right, this is the 10 degrees of the Royal Arch. And then on the left, there are 33 degrees of the uh, Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. So if you hear of somebody being a 33 degree Mason, that's actually the Scottish Rite, which is a concordant body. Uh, again, you need to be a Master Mason to join that. And then the third concordant body is known as the Shrine, the um, Order Noble Mystics of the Shrine. I'll, I'll look that up at some point in this video and, and give you a, the proper name. So, you know, on our walls, there's many artifacts that uh, a story could be told about each of them. So this is uh, Hugh Walker's plaque for appreciation of 20 years of service as the treasurer of the uh, chapter in, um, in Ontario, I guess. And um, this one is, uh, yeah, from, again, from Toronto. Um, so there's some of the uh, jewels and whatnot that uh, Brother Walker had. Uh, another certificate. Um, the one I really wanted to show you um, is this photograph, which um, this gentleman was named Elon Ezira Chipman. And uh, here's his little bio. Basically, he was uh, first city clerk of the village of Caslow, which was a city back then. And uh, he resigned when he was appointment, appointed as the government agent, uh, gold commissioner, etc., for the province. 
And then uh, he, after retirement, he was a police magistrate uh, in Caslo. Uh, but he was actually the Grand Master of British Columbia for 1902-1903, and his grave is in the Masonic section of the Caslo Cemetery. Um, again, you know, many pictures and historical records. Um, this is, uh, you know, a, a certificate of the Royal Arch Masons. And there it is, the Nobles of the Mystic Shrine is what the Shriners are called. So you certainly heard of the um, Shriners Hospital. And that is one of their main purposes is to uh, do um, charitable works with uh, mostly children with disabilities. Um, this is a photograph of us giving a check to the hospice. I believe that donation was $10,000 at the time. And uh, we don't have a year on that, but uh, I can tell from the picture that it was uh, probably in the 1990s or early 2000s. Um, I see Jack Morris there, former mayor. Uh, Mrs. Conroe, my grade four teacher. Uh, brother Hugh Walker on the far right, and uh, most worshipful brother Alan Tomlins right to the left of him. A uh, variety of brothers in the background. That man presenting the check there is Bruce Morrison, um, right worshipful because he is the district deputy grandmaster in that photo, and so that's a title that he'll hold uh, forever. And uh, in the back there, Oh, anyway, I, I won't introduce them all, but uh, you can see Charlie Stickle, Gary Weitz, uh, a few others uh, from our lodge. And um, let's see, what else do I want to show you? There's uh, a bunch of the, the chiefs of Royal Arch Masons. Um, we've got, uh, uh, let me think of his name. Um, it'll come back to me. Um, Embry. Uh, Annette Embry is his wife and does charitable work in Mexico for a school for handicapped children. Um, this is a list of uh, lodges in District 6 and 7, so the Kootenays. Ainsworth applied for a petition, but it was not granted because they couldn't get in touch with the people who had petitioned. So the lodge with the lowest number is Nelson number 23 which was uh, granted a charter in 1894. Caslow was granted its charter in 1895, so we celebrated our 125th anniversary last year, had a banquet uh, in Nelson as a joint celebration with Nelson Lodge at the Prestige, and um, we're Lodge number 25 in British Columbia. Then Corinthian was originally in Rossland, but that's now the name of the lodge in Trail because Rossland and Trail merged, and so they always go with the lowest numbered lodge uh, when two lodges merge. So there's a lodge in Greenwood. There used to be a lodge in Sandon called Alta Lodge, but that's now mar merged with the Slocan Lodge in New Denver. Um, yeah, I won't list them all, but of course there's a lodge in Castlegar. There used to be another lodge in Nelson, which is now merged. Granite Lodge merged with Nelson Lodge. Um, I believe there used to be a lodge in Trout Lake. Um, Creston's actually in a different district. That's district number eight. Uh, Nacusp has Star of the West Lodge, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, receipts from 100 years ago. This is, you know, amusing. This is, uh, there's, you know, something from the 100th anniversary. There's a story between, behind this one, um, and um, you know Royal Arch, Royal Arch Chapter again, picture of the Queen from her 60th anniversary. That was her Diamond Jubilee, and um, Brother Walker actually got a Diamond Jubilee medal from the Queen through the Governor General that year. Nice painting of our lodge from the 1980s. Um, there is a picture of the original owners of the building. So Henry Giegridge and the, uh, the two Green brothers, were, who the store was named after. The original post office for Caslow was in this building. Um, so, 
picture group picture of the Lodge Brethren from 1991 and yeah again 1991 um, this is again the same picture of uh, what the lodge looked like in the 1890s um, the second story was added for a sum of twelve hundred dollars the building's foundation was uh, redone in 1976 uh, a lot of Sister Lodges contributed money to making that possible. Um, the whole building was jacked up and then the new foundation poured. This is a receipt for the original chairs, which we still have. Uh, let's see, $10 a dozen. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll show you a few more artifacts and then we'll go upstairs because that's the, the most interesting part. Now, this is our library. Of course, uh, we've got some very old Masonic books. Um, we've got a few uh, pictures here of different members. Um, this is another certificate of the, um, well, this is from the Scottish Rite. This is the Order of the Eastern Star, which is a co-masonry where Wives of master masons can participate in ritual, so it's for men and women, whereas Freemasonry as a fraternity. Um, this is from Scotland, from Paul Bagger, who was an alderman of Caslow, and this is his uh, certificate as a member of the Nobles of the Mystic Shrine. Um, yeah, obviously, he was a member of the Scottish Rite as well. Now, uh, this is the crest of the village of Caslow, and the Freemasons were involved in getting the um, people in charge of, of heraldry and uh, crests the, um, anyway, to, to you know, approve that. Uh, there was a few other people involved, obviously, and... Uh, Let's see, I'm just going to find that again. Anyway, I uh, could read that in more detail, but, uh, you know, suffice to say that um, we have been involved in Caslow's heritage for a long time. Uh, this photograph, quite impressive, a lot of master masons standing in front of the Civic Theatre in Nelson, uh, for a gathering in 1938. I'm not sure the number of people in that crowd, but uh, looks like well over 100 to me. Um, anyway, I will move upstairs and show you the, uh, the very cool lodge room upstairs, which is still in the same state it was in in 1896. So here we are upstairs, a um, couple of tracing boards showing some of the Masonic symbolism. This is our original organ, which was replaced. And actually, if anybody's interested in a working organ, it's uh, Lowry and it's available to anybody who wants to carry it away. I've posted it online a few times. Um, had a few nibbles, but no bites. And uh, these are some paintings by uh, some disabled people in Mexico who are, were uh, attendees of that school that I mentioned that Annette Embry helps with. Uh, this is a certificate from the mayor um, who attended our, part of our 125th anniversary celebrations, which was attended by the Grand Master of Brissy at the time. These are some of the books that we have as treasures. Now this here is the lodge room. I'll take you in there in a moment. Just outside is the porch book, and that is the preparation room where a candidate for initiation would, would be prepared for his initiation. Now, these are photographs of some of the worshipful masters from the past decade or two. Um, and uh, for example, there is Worshipful Brother Dennis Jensen, who passed away in, last October, uh, well, I guess October 2019. Um, 
And um, this is a list of the first hundred years of masters of Castle Lodge. Um, so, you know, you can pause the video and explore that list if you like. Um, this is a list of our current officers. So, um, there you have it. <laughs> um, you know, different titles based on uh, the different positions they've held. That's uh, Worshipful Brother Embry there, uh, who's since passed. Um, and uh, my coach, uh, Charlie Stickle, who uh, helped me get involved. Um, Morley Hyatt has passed away, was a very active member of our lodge, acted as the Tyler. This is Jack McQuaig, my good friend, uh, my current coach and the secretary of our lodge, right worshipful brother Bruce Askew, uh, right worshipful brother Larry Link, very worshipful uh, Bob McKnight, uh, his worshipful brother Brian Strongman, and right worshipful brother John Dunn, who will, is the worshipful master elect. He will sit as the worshipful master again uh, once we are able to hold meetings again and uh, ha hold in our installation. Usually we have an installation once a year to install the new officers of the lodge. So I'll give you a little view of the whole room and then I'll take you around and show you some of the interesting things. Now, a unique feature of this lodge is these uh, mountain goats. We don't know the story. They've probably been there a very long time, but I do know that these type of mountain goats uh, exist on, near the Lardo Bluffs, just north of Caslow. This uh, pillar has a celestial globe on top of it. Uh, these pillars symbolize the, the pillars that were on either side of the entrance of uh, Solomon's temple, King Solomon of the Old Testament. And there's a terrestrial globe on top of this uh, pillar. Um, this is the senior warden's station. Um, and uh, this photograph is uh, most worshipful brother Edward Hearn uh, of Salmo, who's passed away just a few years ago, but uh, held the office of Grand Master of British Columbia and Yukon, 91 to 92. And um, I've got to say, I was honored to have two former Grand Masters um, at my initiation and in raising, when I was raised to the third degree as a Master Mason, I, uh, I had two former Grand Masters uh, in attendance and involved in the ceremony. Uh, these are some of the jewels from members of our lodge who have 50 years of service. So, Brother Hugh Walker, Charlie Stickle, Embry, and uh, and then past di district deputy grandmasters, and um, I believe that was Tom Limbury's uh, for being the Grand Lodge's steward at one point. We've got photographs of past DDGMs. Um, nobody can really tell me the story behind this painting. I'm sure there's some symbolism there. And uh, more photos of people who come before us. Uh, this is photos of recent District Deputy Grandmasters, DDGM 2009 to 2010. And uh, this is another tracing board full of Masonic symbolism. You can just take a peek at all that and take from it what you will. Um, this station here is for the Worshipful Master of the Lodge. Um, there's uh, usually a, something there, and we would have a, uh, a gavel 
to, to bang. Uh, you'll notice the square of the, as the symbol, um, whereas the um, level is the symbol for the senior warden station and the plum is the symbol for the junior warden station. Um, symbolically, that's the south of the lodge and that is the west of the lodge. And then the altar, certain features of a lodge are universal in every lodge. So this feature, um, John Gentleman did a nice job of, of uh, setting it up for us because it was just a loose uh, tarp before and he, he framed it for us. Now, you, in some lodges, these three uh, lights are, are candles which get lit at the beginning of, of a lodge meeting. In our lodge, they're actually light bulbs that are very special and unique because uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, they have the square and compasses symbol with the G in, in the light and filament for the lodge or for the for the bulb so there's another view of the altar um, <laughs> there's actually knob and tube wiring in that altar which is 125 years old um, what else can I show you there's a framed bit of the original wallpaper before the water stains uh, we've we've fixed the the leaks on the roof um, the the new Organ is under there that was donated by one of our sister lodges. Uh, there's a historical story of that uh, gavel, which was put back together when uh, somebody who was very boisterous banged it too hard and it shattered into many pieces. Um, we've got a wood stove that heats the lodge uh, in the winter months when we have our meetings, which are once a month, every month except for January and February. And... Uh, this wood stove was provided by our very worshipful brother, Tom Limbery, who owns the Grey Creek store on the east shore of Kootenay Lake. Um, I guess we'll, we'll call it a tour there. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Freemasonry, I highly recommend the Grand Lodge of British Columbia and Yukon's website, uh, freemasonry.bc. No, I'm sorry, freemasonry.bcy.ca. And um, they've got a lot of uh, different papers that you can read. Uh, this is the perfect ashlar, which you'll find in many ancient lodges. That is the rough ashlar, symbolic of uh, a man when he comes into Freemasonry. And uh, the goal is to get the rough edges off of us. And uh, I just wanted to come over here and show you the photograph of the other former Grand Master of British Columbia, who's a member of Caslow Lodge, most worshipful brother Alan Tomlins, uh, retired RCMP sergeant, and was Grand Master of British Columbia and Yukon, 1997 to 1998. Uh, good friend. And this is our charter, which was granted by Grand Lodge British Columbia in 1895 and uh, is uh, this document which gives us the right to practice and perform Freemasonry and all its rituals and yes like I say uh, you can learn more uh, if you're interested in joining please email myself at lodge25 at caslo.org and um, yeah Thank you for your attention. It's, uh, it's been fun to show you. And um, not sure what else to say. So thanks again. Take care.